tonight on Hip on the Spot News. We forge ahead with Hitblur's roadmap and learn about the next generation module. We check out the MiG-17 fresco from Red Star Simulations. Jester goes back to school and learns a few tricks. And we ask Petrovich what's the holdup, while the KA-50 sings the Baby Shark song with the Igla missiles. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I am Andre Celesti and today we will take a look at the latest news from DCS World. Starting with Hitblur that posted an update to their public roadmap including more content we presented previously on the channel, like the future implementation of an AI A6 intruder and later a flyable version for the module. Or the Forest All Class carriers that seem to be still in the works with a few extra work in progress screenshots like the CV-59 deck and more. Now let's take it from the top and check out what came together with the Open Beta Update 2.7. And we start with a few features that have been released for the AGS-37 Vigan, a module that we recently included in our startup tutorial series. If you are interested, you can check it out too by following the card that appeared on the screen right now. Ok, on the top list for the Vigan, they added the ability to load up road bases from map markers using a specific name syntax. They improved the EP30 site to better reflect the positioning and usability of the real device and they introduced the brightness and contrast control for it. Altogether with a fix for a bug that was plaguing the weapon selector switches and more fixes to the night lightning and the afterburner. With 2.7, the F14 Tomcat users got another major feature for Jester with the awareness calls. He will now specify speeds, near ideal speeds and relevant information in dangerous situations. Now that was the 2.7 update tab on the Hitblur public roadmap. Moving on with what to expect in the nearby future, we get to see that more work is being done to the Forestall class carrier variants that will form a core part of the content package developed together with the F-14 Tomcat. And pay attention to this, the Forestall class will ship with a baseline standard of DCS aircraft carrier features, but they do specify that future versions may include supercarrier features. They will introduce the USS Saratoga as a variant to the Forestall class carriers, with the further two Independence and Ranger requiring large reworks so we should expect them in the distant future. Then the AI, and I will repeat, AI J35J Draken, legendary Swedish aircraft. I know guys, I saw your comments, but no flyable Draken on the horizon. But it is specified that the AI Draken will be recreated in the same detail and high fidelity that any human controlled ECS aircraft from Hitler would be. Let's just hope our performance won't take a strong hit when we add a few Draken flights in our mission editor. Their initial release will focus on the J-35J with requisite armaments and liveries. A paint kit will be published as well. Now for the star of the show. The A-60 Intruder will first be introduced as an AI aircraft together with a KA-6 tanker variant and wait for it. And after that, we will need to wait patiently to get it as a flyable module somewhere in the future. So the next step, it's all about the Vigan. So let's see what's planned for the future of this magnificent bird, as it is one of the main priorities for the team to deliver the aircraft out of early access to another major update. The AGS-37 will receive a full overhaul of its exterior specular textures to natively support the DCS PBR standard. This will allow for more accurate lightning and representation of both matte paint and bare metal aircrafts. Tweaks and fixes to the ground radar, accurate dynamical tactical numbering, so no longer will the aircraft bear the same number, that and also it will include large tactical numbers that will be taped to the wings of the Wiggins during training exercises. These will be toggable and they will dynamic match the painted tactical number of the jet. The damage modeling will also be improved with a rebuilt collision model for ground interaction and damage. Coming from the improvements made to the F-14, some of the animations will be extended to the Vigan, like hand signals and other more intricate movements. Also, similar to the Tomcat, the Vigan will get a new fully custom exterior sound set that will accurately reflect the sound of the RM-8 engine. More improvements to the cockpit, mentioning the canopy, canopy sealants and real bulkheads. And coming for all Hitler aircrafts is an entire new afterburning rendering system. This system will greatly enhance realism and visual feedback for different afterburner stages. Oh ho ho! 
let the power shine. We do like our afterburners, don't we? Yes, we do. So let's move on. They mentioned that at this moment they are in the process of entirely simplifying, cleaning up and improving the vegan main texture set and paint kit. With this they are fixing some of the remaining texture issues and these new PSDs will make it far easier for livery creators to create new vegan liveries. And sticking with the liveries, well you guessed it, more default liveries. And that was the vegan. Let's move on to the F14 Tomcat. And it seems that Jester is taking some new classes. So everybody let's give him a good cheer and hope he does well. He is learning how to use the lantern pod. Allowing the single player pilot to witness the firepower of a fully armed and operational Tomcat without the help of a human Rio. They also mentioned that as part of this process they are recording many new authentic voice lines and in the future will also include improvements in Jester's reporting logic. Well he is taking quite some classes then. This includes getting rid of unnecessary or unrealistic missile callouts, improvements in the positioning callouts during BFM, better IFF and other small tweaks that should improve the player's quality of life and immersion. As one of the top priorities, Hitblur mentions that they are working together with Eagle Dynamics to improve the AIM-54 and implementing a new missile API and flight model. As they plan to expand the in-cockpit animation systems to better serve side-by-side -side aircraft such as the A6E, pilot bodies and animations are coming to the Tomcat. Next up, improvements to the Tomcat's visual damage model. These updates will revolve around adding visible damage to components already simulated, but also adding more granular damage for various system components and major airframe parts where feasible. And looky looky here, the R14B will receive the AEGT, the correct engine instrument for its cockpit. I remember you guys mentioning this one in a previous video. There you go. They will add vapor effects and improvements to the existing ones. Similar to the Vigan, the Tomcat will receive more default liveries, giving us a choice to pick up the iconic squadrons that flew the F-14. As part of the work in creating the ALR-45 for the F-14A, they are working on the new RWR signal algorithm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a bonus variant for the A-version Tomcat is the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force version. It will come with its own set of liveries, will have somewhat restricted weapon loadouts, no TCS, no lantern capability and will offer an additional challenge for the OP4 pilots to master. Moving on, improvements will be done in unifying some of the internal sounds of both Tomcat variants in order to better synchronize exterior and interior sounds, also correcting some of the minor issues remaining such as constant audio volume regardless of the canopy position. Also in the listing is a new campaign, Operation Nimble Archer, a campaign for the F-14A and the Persian Gulf map. This campaign aspires to recreate and build upon two events between 1987 and 1988 during which the US Navy fought an undeclared war against Iran. And sticking with missions and campaigns, part 2 of the Reforger saga is coming to DCS as a third and free bonus campaign for the F-14 Tomcat. The campaign main focus will be on air-to-ground missions. Continuing with the Tomcat improvements, Hitblur will add an improved hook and trap model with improved physics, damage and visual representation. The F-14B exterior model is currently missing its external ECM fairings. This will be added and the paint kit will be updated. Also some UI layer improvements will be done to match the quality and tone of DCS world. An already existing and ready to ship feature is to disable and enable Jester or Human Rio with or without multi-crew. This is currently pending the implementation of Jester Lantern. With this feature the user will be able to disable the human Rio and enable Jester with a human presence in the backseat or disable Jester with or without the human being present. This will help with multiplayer disconnections of a human Rio when online and will allow the pilot to turn Jester back on and have access to the Rio functions again until the disconnected Rio rejoins. Additionally, this will be a great feature for the new Rios to observe Jester at work and take some notes, or to take someone for a spin into a fight who does not know how to reel or just wants to tag along. All F-14 variants, minus the Iranian one, will get a top spot added. This will be a visual representation of the pod at a minimum. They are thinking of adding gameplay to it, however a full integration with both HUD and navigation systems most likely will not be provided due to the limited use of the systems in DCS. 
then the introduction of the Heat Blur Forge that will bring the dynamic cockpits to the F-14. Dynamic elements will include common cockpit modifications, changes in fabrics, cushions, dynamic models numbers written or taped in the cockpit and more. And they will continue to add more key binding and inputs, especially towards the end of the early access development process. If you are missing inputs that you would like to see, please check if they are included in this thread. I linked it in the video description. Pretty interesting roadmap until so far. And now we will turn ourselves to the future. First in line is the A6C Intruder as a fully flyable module. Since our last coverage of this announcement, we haven't seen much information yet. As Hitblur mentions that we need to stay tuned as we forge ahead through 2021. But then we see this. Their next complex high fidelity DCS module release titled Next Generation Jet. Labeled as a DCS flyable module, we can only wonder what aircraft could it be. Could this be the Super Hornet, being the replacement for the F-14? Or could this be the GAS-39 Gripen? It is too early to speculate. We will need to wait and see more information as time goes by. But there is another hint for this new generation module, and that is that they announced they are working again with Meteor to bring period fitting inspired soundtracks for the next generation modules. But yeah, we will see when we will see. Now that was the hit blur public roadmap, and we will keep it on our radars for the future. Now let's continue with our show and the next topic is about an independent MiG 17F mod coming with hopes to become an official DCS module. Now bear with me about this one and do not run because you hear the word mod, because this one is a bit different. Red Star Simulations, a group created by two pilots looking to bring the most realistic flight experience possible to DCS world, they are focused on the first through third generation fighter and attack planes from the Soviet Union, Britain, France and the United States. They have a team with members from all around the world and you can check out their website for more information at redstarsimulations.com, link is in the video description. Their current project is the MiG 17F Fresco, which was originally designed to fix the flaws that the MiG 15 had, and at the same time be an interceptor of western bomber planes. But its small size plus power, being the first Soviet plane with an afterburner, and maneuverability made it a formidable plane in dogfights against bigger US adversaries. It was modified to carry first air-to-air -air missiles and later version even included a radar. They have a first look video with the version 0.2 of the MiG 17F, if you want to watch, I linked it in the video description. Red Star Simulations plan is to have the MiG 17F be an official DCS module and available for purchase to Eagle Dynamics. There is no release date at the moment and information about alpha and beta testing is provided on their Facebook but as we noticed they don't receive requests at this time. Also they are considering other projects like the Dassault Super Mystère or the SU-22 Fitter and the SU-42 Fencer but they will not work on any of these projects until the MiG-17 app is officially completed and released. Moving on with an update from Eagle Dynamics for the Mi-24P The High. In the early access phase the module will come with a version 1.0 of the Petrovich AI. Designed as a human assist tool which requests specific sets of instructions via the onboard AI, whether from pilot to co-pilot or the other way around. As mentioned by ED, Petrovich AI's overall philosophy is based on the functionality first principle, with flight commands interface being via a virtual HSI that will offer specific commands and sub-modes. It's a simple control interface that we can use with a 4-way hat switch or buttons. Another interesting thing is that the target recognition and engagement will use the pilot commander's line of sight for target spotting and designation functions with transmission to the pilot operator, and every action will be done with a human delay in response times. Target spotting, identification and selection as well as the correct click to weapon activation. Basically will sound something like Pietrovich come on already! Add to that that they are planning to use two different Russian voices for each seat in the helicopter, in both English and Russian versions and you got yourself an immersive and great experience coming at the end of this month. Sticking with ED's updates, the Black Shark 3 development progress has been posted recently, giving the well-known KA-50 attack helicopter a brand new external 3D model, enhanced cockpit and new features that expand gameplay, 
like the Helicopter Missile Warning System MVS implementation. And we cannot miss the air-to-air IGLA -air missiles, similar to those used in manpads that can hit subsonic aircraft at ranges up to 6 km. Sensors of the MVS will be integrated onto the onboard defense system with the ability to display detected missile threats on the Ebris. Existing owners of the Black Shark 2 are free to continue flying the legacy KA-50 or to upgrade to the new Black Shark 3 for a very reasonable price. Newcomers will be able to buy the full retail version as usual. And that's it, thank you all for watching, if you find our video informative please leave us a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest information and news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.